in shock throughout the country over what happened in Pittsburgh over the weekend. There has been a sharp rise in anti-Semitic acts across the United States. The Anti-Defamation League noted a 50% increase in anti-Semitic incidents nationwide last year compared to 2016. That includes bomb threats, social media threats, anti-Semitic rallies, and defiled graves and synagogues. That's the biggest single year spike since 1979. All right, with us now to talk about this is Rabbi Arnold Samlin. He is the uh, Chief Education Officer at the Jewish Federation of Broward County. And David Barkey is joining us. He is the Senior Southeastern Area Counsel for the Anti-Defamation League. And gentlemen, thank you so much, both of you, for being here and, and shedding some light on this. Rabbi, I want to start with you because you actually have a personal connection with uh, someone at the congregation in Pittsburgh. What insight can you offer us? So I will tell you that I've had a brief conversation uh, with the rabbi uh, via text message actually. Uh, he's a friend of mine and a colleague obviously um, and uh, it was a very short conversation. They are dealing with tremendous tremendous trauma. Um, the funerals begin really tomorrow and uh, there'll be a week of mourning that commences with that. They're dealing again with tremendous sense of loss and a certain amount of loss of innocence as well. It's just unspeakable to, to th imagine what they're going through right now. Um, so David, the Anti-Defamation League warned yesterday that anti-Semitism has, quote, moved from the margins into the mainstream. Is there research that supports this? Well, you just quoted some of our data that from 2016 to 2017, there was a 53% rise in anti-Semitic incidents, which encompasses both criminal and non-criminal acts. I would also note that the year before, there was a 34% rise between 2015 and 2016. Um, I think there are a lot of factors and reasons. I, I think the way we set this is to say that, look, uh, racism and anti-Semitism have been a part of our history since our founding. But particularly since the Civil Rights Movement, there have been strong efforts by leadership to push it to the fringes of our society, to say this is unacceptable in society. Now, the alleged shooter here, he's legally culpable for this heinous act. But at the same time, words matter. And we see politicians and leaders that are creating a toxic environment by their rhetoric that is normalizing and mainstreaming hate. And that's very problematic because it emboldens the haters and extremists. It tells them two things. One, your views are okay, and they shouldn't be. And two, it may prompt some folks to act. Um, the other dynamic I would talk about, because you mentioned, is social media. That, so you have this toxic environment. You have uh, extremists and haters feeling emboldened. And then there's social media, which is a new dynamic, uh, particularly um, the social platforms that we see. Uh, we always talk about a marketplace of ideas, and ADL had always said, well, the way you fight hate speech is through more speech. But the problem that we're seeing now is that uh, social media platforms, they're not marketplaces of ideas because they're designed to connect people who have similar views and beliefs to meet up with each other. So what does that do with people of extremist or hateful views? It, uh, one, puts them with people who have similar views so that amplifies the message and it reinforces the message. And we think these are some of the reasons why there are folks who feel emboldened to engage in this type of heinous activity. Rabbi, I'm curious as to what you say to your congregation. How do you explain the inexplicable? How do you comfort them? How do you even make them feel safe going to synagogue? There's actually quite a movement afoot, actually, just since this attack, um, to bring more people, actually, to synagogue this weekend. Uh, there's a large movement by a number of organizations to say, not only go to synagogue this weekend, uh, to show that you're not going to be uh, defeated by those who hate, but to not only go, but bring a friend with you. Um, it's hardest, probably, to explain to children who are, have not felt this type of hatred before. Adults, unfortunately, have all witnessed and at some level been a party to receiving anti-Semitic threats, etc. Um, and it's uh, really uh, our job is to encourage people to continue to proudly uh, display their Judaism and to also build the alliances that are so important with leaders and good people of other religions, other faith communities, uh, and other ethnicities. I want to ask, do you, do you see South Florida as kind of something that's mirroring what's happening in the country as a whole? Because we here in our community have had our fair share of anti-Semitic incidents as well. We've had vandalisms Correct. and uh, arrests of people who are threatening the Jewish community. Do you see that? Does that concern you? 
It certainly concerns us. Uh, I will tell you that in our community alone, in our South Florida community, literally millions of dollars are spent by Jewish organizations uh, to provide security and protection. It's money well spent, but it's money hard to earn and obviously drives up the cost of being involved in religious and community life. Um, yes, we've seen threats to synagogues, uh, thwarted bombings, a murder in North Miami Beach of a rabbi who was walking to synagogue. Um, on the other hand, uh, we take some faith in knowing that the vast majority of American citizens and our neighbors are not violent people and are people that are uh, allies to us and not enemies. David, what was your reaction when you saw the tweet from President Trump this weekend saying, well, had there been somebody there with a gun to protect those people attending the, the congregation, that would have been a different situation? Well, my first reaction is I was disappointed. Uh, my second reaction was, uh, uh, you know, uh, two things. One, we want our houses of worship to be welcoming places. We don't want them to be fortresses. And uh, unfortunately, the, the Jewish community knows too well we need security, but we try to balance that. Um, so that's something we have to think of. And the third thing is um, security really is only a deterrence. Uh, had there been a security guard, um, you had someone here with a, a long gun, a more powerful gun than a pistol, um, I, I would think that that security guard probably would have ended up um, being either seriously wounded or killed as well. So I'm not sure that's the, I don't think arming um, our religious institutions is the answer. What we say as far as security, and that's something that we work on, religious institutional security, is that work with law enforcement, create those relationships. They're the best answer uh, to preparing you for, unfortunately, these types of awful incidents. And we've seen condemnation from the president and our leaders, but we also saw attacks on the media, a, a tweet just today calling the media the enemy of the people and kind of blaming the media for the, the stepped up heightened uh, atmosphere and the tension that's going on right now in our society. What's your reaction to that? You mentioned that you wanted to see more condemnation. Right. I, I mean, again, the, the perpetrator here is legally culpable for what happened. But as I said, that we're seeing this normalization and mainstreaming of hate by leaders and politicians on both sides. Um, it's not just people on the right, but they're, they're individuals on the left. And um, one statement is not enough. You need to, whenever hate rears its ugly head, we need our leaders, our politicians, all Americans, whether they're online and their community, to stand up to it, to clearly say, this is unacceptable if you attack one group in our country is an attack on all of us because our nation, uh, to truly uh, be a pluralistic nation, accepting of all, we have to stamp out anti-Semitism and racism and bigotry and, as I said, push back the haters and to the extremists to the fringes of society. Rabbi, I think you're right. I think we're going to see big turnouts this weekend at the houses of worship and a lot of support. Uh, from everyone, everybody in South Florida. Uh, Rabbi Arnold Samlin, thank you very much for joining thank us. Thank you. And thank you very much uh, to uh, David Barkey from the, uh, the Senior uh, Southeastern Area Council for the ADL, the Anti-Defamation League. Thank, thank you for having much. me. Thank you for all you do.